Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm one of your co-hosts, Rico Borrego. I am your other co-host, Tony Borrego. And this is the podcast known as Relatively Sound, the podcast that takes pride in its name. I came up with the name for this podcast. Um, I spitballed some ideas with Tony, and one of them was Relatively Sound, and that was my play on the word relative, because Tony and I are brothers. If you didn't know. If you didn't didn't know by now, then you obviously haven't listened to any episode or Or i guess the the intro the intro (laughs) where where we have we introduce ourselves but um yeah so the play on the word relative relatively the sound music because i wanted it like for people to kind of get an idea that it's a music podcast kind of also i kind of copied the name a little bit from a jason isbell song relatively easy so i was like oh relatively sound and, you know, sound could be used as like something is sound, you know, not not just like music, like actual sound, but like something is sound. So we everyone I, I told everyone the name I told Lindsay, I, I, I think I told our mom and like everyone liked it. So we used it um, and names are important because when you're like, even though they say not to judge a book by cover by its cover, you typically do. I mean, it's just the, the way it goes especially when it comes to like media, like movies, um, like, you know, poster artwork um, and obviously music books. But when it comes to a band name, I also think it's very important. Um, so now, Tony, can what I you... say what makes the, um, the title of this podcast, I think, a good name to be a little bit self-indulgent? Of course. Um, you had mentioned that, oh, sound can mean this thing or this thing. Yeah. I think a good name for a band or an album should sound like its own term separate from what the words actually mean. So you were just saying like sound could mean music. It can mean secure. So relatively sound, like you could say that in a sentence like, Oh, well, I guess this thing is relatively sound or it kind of starts to take on its own noun, so to speak. So just to kind of jump into a band that kind of has that going for it, would be like Pearl Jam. You don't think of jam made of pearls. You think of like, oh, Pearl Jam is a thing. Does that make sense? That's very true. Um, and yeah, we're specifically for this episode, we're going to just talk about band names. I'm sure in the future we will do album names and things like that. But um, so going just off your example, I totally agree. Um, unfortunately, I, I... Like okay, when I when I think of Pearl Jam and I think of the name and I say it, yeah, I've I've said it so many times over the last, you know, ten plus years that it's not weird to me. But when I do think about it, even just a little bit more, like deeper, I don't like the name. Agreed. Like, it's yeah, like when you just say it fast, like Pearl Jam, like yeah, it's not. And neither word is a bad word. Pearl's not a bad where jam's not a bad word. And jam, I like a lot, actually, as a word when it comes to music, because you think of like a jam, a jam sesh, you know, things like that. But something about it, just like Pearl Jam, like when you try to decipher what it is, is like gibberish. Like, and they changed it, so their their band name from Mookie Blaylock, which was named after a basketball player. And they ended up calling 10, 10, because that was his jersey number. But... Um, neither are good band names to me. Um, but yeah, like it's not, I don't think an offensive band name, but I do like how it's, you know, when you say it, it, it like you said, it is like its own thing. Um, right. Like, like Led like, Zeppelin, right? Yeah. And Led Zeppelin, I, I, so, okay. The, I feel like there's a lot of band categories. And I feel like one of the band categories is things that are already things. If that makes sense. Like, okay, there's yes. not there's not a Pearl Jam, right? So like they were <laughs> creative in coming up with something new, but like Led Zeppelin, even though like before the band, I don't know if like people were going around saying Led Zeppelin a lot, but like Well, Zeppelin, do you know the story of it? I do not. So and, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this, so I'll keep it as vague as possible. But um, so I guess I think they're talking about a band was going to, you know, sync like a Led Zeppelin. 
um, or something like that. So I, I suppose it was like kind of in a more of an insulting way. And so they named the band that. Oh, yeah, because of like the historical Zeppelin that like caught on fire. Oh, um, I thought they just meant like if a Zeppelin was made of lead. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I guess I guess the person well, looking like, at this what, more isn't there. Like, okay, I, I, when it comes to like historical things, one well, general Tony and I are like, <laughs> we're not great on that. But, um, I'm usually better about like, like historical things when it comes to bands and music. But I actually don't know. Like, I know obviously I know a ton mm. of Led Zeppelin songs and stuff, but I don't know if I've ever heard of like a Led Zeppelin album in its entirety because they're just a band. I, You're I, awful. I, I like, <laughs> but. Isn't like the album cover of one of their one of their album covers like a Zeppelin like on fire? Am I making that up? Oh wait, actually, yeah. Is is that actually on fire? This, you're talking about Led Zeppelin too. We I don't know if it's on fire, but I, I know it's like. Isn't it? What is the picture? Wait, wait, no, wait. Or is it just like a picture of? A They're Zeppelin? on both of them. Okay, there is a Zeppelin, but it's not on fire. I I, I can't up. tell. It's kind of abstract. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's why. Um, but like, yeah, I think it is. But yeah, like it's it's like a, okay. So for example, like another band name that's a thing. Well, there's like a ton. Like okay, uh, Queen. It's just as simple as that, right? It's a Queen, or or like the Postal Service. Like they're naming themselves after, I guess you would say, like an organization. I I don't know what you call the Postal Service, uh, <laughs> but like you know, like and it's like, is that really creative? Like the Postal Service, I think is kind of funny for some reason, but like Queen isn't funny. But I don't think Queen's a bad band name either. Yeah. Well, what about Red Hot Chili Peppers? Well, it's, okay. I mean, it's 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 kind of like maybe quirky, but it's then, definitely not funny. Then we get like longer band names, and like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Again, I've said their names so many times over the years that like it to me rolls off the tongue. But I think if you're not familiar with the band, it doesn't roll off the tongue. And I know you can just call them like the Chili Peppers. Which almost would have been or better. the Red Hots, yeah, or the Red Hots. And then if you're typing the name online, I always just do H or so H R H C P. Um, but I don't like how long the band name is. But I will say, and this is something we need to put into consideration. I do think that for some reason the Radish Red Peppers, the the name somehow fits the band and the band's vibe and the music. Right, right. Which you which I mean. None of them resemble an actual chili pepper, but for some reason, that's the identity, you know? Like, Rage Against the Machine really fits with oh, yeah, that's, Rage Against the Machine. I mean, and you that's could, the best I mean, example. Obviously, you know, lyrically, it kind of sounds like it would be a lyric from them, so that helps, but... No, I agree. I mean, you have some, like, and I'm not against longer band names. Like, for example, I think a good band name that's kind of a little longer is Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a solid. I, I also think it fits their music a little bit. And but I just like it like it's they they're not just like here's already just like a thing like a Led Zeppelin or the Postal Service. Like they made something like new. It's almost like a phrase, you know, Queens of the Stone Age. But it just it sounds creative and it sounds new. Or I'm sure it, it sounds new, like when they first came out. I guess. Um, and it's especially cool when it's like not. Although I'm not against bands that are, that take their name from something specific either. Well, okay, real quick, real quick, talking about long band names. What do you think about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? I was gonna bring them up at some point, uh, <laughs> even though I know you and I, I've never heard. I don't think even a full song from them. Uh, Did but I? I, I, I know, like I definitely know the band, and I know like they release like five albums a year and oh do they really oh yeah they Legends. have like i don't think they've even been around for like 10 years and i think they have like 30 albums jesus they're, they're kind of like a bucket head a little bit okay um, okay but yeah that one's it's funny and, may, and maybe it's just because i don't listen to them or i have not attempt to listen to them yet but if like i became a fan of them i would be a like a little embarrassed of the name like saying oh, that name out loud it's like, kind of like, like the bare Chili naked Peppers ladies too. Yeah, Bare Naked Ladies. That, that's even worse than the Chili that's Peppers. That's like the worst. One. Well, out of the bands we like, let's do. I say that's the worst one. There's some other ones that are are worse. Like I think the Butthole Surfers are worse. Right, that one's not too good. 
I mean, it's Steely Dan should be worse, but I actually quite like Steely Dan. Why should it be worse? I I guess I never really thought of that name. Do you know, like, I I guess it's actually it? named out of um, a certain toy from a magazine or something like that. Oh, um, huh. special toy. Oh, I see where you're going. Okay. I mean, come on, I think about it. I Steely Dan. I I. I mean, I, I, I get your implications, but I, I would never have put that like Here, two and two together. Do yourself a favor. Go to Google Images. I'm not going to, or, <laughs> but, um, I've, I have a feeling a lot of people like. I, I bet you there's a lot of people like me who never knew that. Right. I mean, I only knew it because I like read about it. I saw like a article or something, but I wouldn't have thought mm, that sure, honestly. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> Um, but uh, and then okay, like okay, so that was a band name that I thought was just like two random things put together, and there's a lot of band names like that. Coldplay, like right, su- and I think their original name was something like even worse, like it was like Starfish something. Well, well, you think Coldplay is bad? I don't think it's bad. Like it to me, Coldplay and like a band like Mute Math, they're to me their bands were they're not bad names. They're just like two random things they put together. Like, I don't think Coldplay, I really feel like it's just two random things. Me math is like two random things. Like there's, I can't think of, and I think when you like look up the history of those names, like there's like the, the, you know, the bands go, oh, well, yeah, we just, someone's said it and that's what it was. I can't remember. There's a band out there who they were trying to come up with their name and they like flip through, they flip through a dictionary and randomly pointed their finger at something. And that's what ended up becoming the band, but I don't remember which band it was. Oh, huh, that'd be interesting. I think it was a band I don't like, or maybe we don't like, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what band. Uh, by the way, I did a quick Google search, and this is too good not to share. So with Coldplay, I guess Chris Martin and the lead guitarist started as a duo known as Pectorals with a Z. And then once the bassist joined, they changed the name to Starfish. Which so that wait, each wait, one's been an say improvement. Say that first thing one more time. Chris Martin and uh, I guess Johnny Buckland um, started a duo known as Pectorals with okay, a that Z. That doesn't familiar. I, I, they probably that I is saw, awful. Yeah, that's bad. I they probably mentioned that because I, I saw their documentary a couple years oh. ago when it came out. But Starfish was like the band's first name, right? And they became a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Starfish like I don't know like not, like Starfish itself isn't like a bad name. You it's know? a nice word, but it doesn't but, fit like, the band. For a band. Or just for a band name in general, I don't I don't like it for some reason. And really, a lot of these are just like, we don't like, whether I like a band's name or not has nothing to really do with like the band or the music itself for the most part. Like, it's all just like a a gut feeling. Like, I like it, I don't like it. And you can't, it some, really a lot of it I can't explain. Some of it I can't explain why. Some of it I can't, like Butthole Surfer is this self-explanatory why. I don't like that name. In I fact, if you like, like it, it probably says something about you. you well, know? yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's so like there's, but, but then like, there's like Fugazi, like what the heck is Fugazi? But it sounds cool. Yeah. Or like, well, okay. Cause when you started saying Fugazi, I thought you were going to say Foo Fighters. Oh, okay. And like Foo Fighters and U2, I put in the same category. Cause they're both like, okay, U2 is named after like an actual like jet plane. Oh, Okay. And the Foo Fighters are, I th- I think it's like has something to do with like UFOs. Mm, okay. Um, and like, I guess the Foo Fighters is a little bit more creative, but it's like Pearl Jam, where like I say Foo Fighters out loud and it's like fine, but then when I go Foo Fighters, it sounds silly. Yeah, you're like the Foos. Yeah, and I feel like U two. Well, people just hate U two for so many different reasons. And I and I don't think it's actually the band name. I actually think it's because like half the members have their own nicknames. <laughs> uh, and I think that to to, peop- to many people that it makes them more pre- like pretentious. Um, which I can I can see, but the flea. Yeah, but no one ever nickname. rags. No one ever rags on flea for his nickname, do they? No, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so I don't know why people do. I mean, I can, I get, I can kind of see the edge a little bit, like Bono, though. Like, I don't, I don't know why people like. There's nothing that. wrong with Bono. Yeah, the edge is a little bit more silly, but like the edge was because, like, 
because I, I read Bono's uh, autobiography that came out, I think, earlier this year or late last year. Um, and they started name like calling him the Edge because, like, I guess, like his face. They just thought, like, when they were like um, kids and teenagers, like he just had a very like angular face, and like I guess the way he dressed and the way he acted was very just kind of like angular and I guess like pointy and stuff. So then, like, started the calling him the Edge. I can't remember where I always forget where Bono's new thing comes from though. But that is um, awesome. Yeah. And then I and I then there are different band names that have a little history that makes them good. For example, Radiohead. Do you happen to know where Radiohead gets their name from? I do, but I could not tell you which one. I heard it's from a Bob Dylan song. Are you joking? Or are you serious? No, is is that not true? That is not true. Oh my the hell? god. That was like the farthest from being true. <laughs> I mean, you're right. It's named after a song, but out of all the artists or bands you could have picked, that was the worst one. You well, mean Bob Dylan has a song called Radiohead. <laughs> no, well, I know. Okay. I, 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 okay. I know where you're coming from. Okay. So you're not as dumb as I thought because <laughs> I, you're thinking of the um, Radiohead song, Subterranean Homesick Alien. Bob Dylan has a song called uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Oh, okay. But maybe, you should have known that's where that, that because from. I want to say the Chili Peppers have covered that song. And then Weird yes, Al. I know that song. Weird Al's song, Bob, is is a parody of that song. Yes, I know the original and yeah. I know both those covers. And both those covers are really good. Well, I don't know if I call the uh, Weird Al want to cover. <laughs> well, I mean, he covered the music video, too. So come on. Well, yeah, that's true. Okay. But no, it comes from a Talking Head song. Oh, Head. that makes more sense. Yeah, but it's weird because when you listen to that Talking Head song in general, it does not sound like ra- uh, radio. Yeah, it does not sound like ra- I thought I said full play. It doesn't sound like Radiohead <laughs> at all. Like it's it's <laughs> not a song you think Radiohead would ever cover. Uh, but I do think I think Tom York loves the Talking Heads, but I don't think and if they were OK, and if they w- are inspired by the Talking Heads, it's definitely like we're made in light era Talking Heads, not definitely not uh, the album that Radiohead is off of. Because that's Yo, like later talking heads that people don't like as much. I got to give another shout out to our public library. This was uh, the album talking head one that the radio head song is on. That one is one of the CDs I rented from the library, but I didn't really, I didn't like the album. <laughs> so, wait, so you know the album, but you don't know the song. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't like the song. Can, like can you tell me the name of the album? No, I can't even tell you the name uh, of the album. So then how do you know this? Because I know the album cover, I heard it, but I didn't even know what it was called. Okay, then I'm just, just I'm not I'm not trying to call your bluff. Like I don't think you're lying, but like, can you tell me what you think the album cover looks like from your memory? No, no, I'm looking at the album cover right now. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh, you're looking at it. Okay, so yeah, yeah th- th- that's how I know. True, true this stories album. is what it's called by by people who are, um, this I guess giving a damn still at this point in in this, <laughs> um. Well, it's not even a tangent because we're still talking about band names, but we're this is, well, okay. Let, let um, let's reel it back in here. But yeah, so like I th- I like Radiohead because it is, okay. That's the only reason I like Radiohead more than Coldplay or Mute Math because even though it's like just two random things, the Lord. it's like named after a song, you know. So I like that, okay. and then I I also like like uh, Soundgarden because yeah, I, it's named after is it a park in Seattle? I thought it was like an art sculpture or something. Or an art, yeah, something, but something, something in, in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, you might be right. Maybe it's an art sculpture, but it comes from its roots, like the band's roots, Seattle, you know, Washington, and and those are two words that I like together. Like, it's it's. I mean, it, we share a you know relatively sound sound garden, but like, <laughs> I don't know. I like. I I do think that sound the name sound garden seems like it should be more for like a prog band. Because they think of like a sound garden. They're kind of like, proggy though. Well, people won't say that, but they are kind of proggy. <laughs> people, people won't say, but I will. <laughs> I'm the only one that has the guts to say it on this podcast. <laughs> well, um, you got the people. I mean, hey. yeah. I mean, I guess like they they definitely. I mean, I not even knowing their music that well. I definitely know like bet- like they have different eras. Like their first couple albums do not sound like. Um, they do not sound like um, super unknown. Yeah, no, they're super few unknown. Are more doesn't like even sound Sabbath-y. like. Yeah. Um, um. Well, okay, so you're talking about bands that have like a local thing going for them. So here's something crazy: Stone Temple Pilots is kind of a wild band name because I don't like it. 
<laughs> but I love STP. That's like a band name that I think they were they saw a bunch of those like motor oil stickers that say STP and they wanted to come up with a band name using those initials. So what do, I wonder what does STP originally stand for then when it comes to the to the oil? Yeah. I have no idea. Um, but as you say, I didn't know that. So but, but yeah. then they picked they just picked random three random things like okay, yeah. stone, that's S, temple, that's T, pilot's P, like Yep, yep. Nope. Even though it I don't know how they could not have come up with something better. Oh, so the motor oil one is scientifically treated petroleum. Ooh. Okay, maybe Stone Temple Pilots isn't as bad <laughs> considering that's an option. But I, I will say I've never I almost whenever we talk about Stone Temple Pilots, you I feel like you always just say STP. It's quicker also, but well Right. I mean STP Stone Temple. Yeah, it is. There's less syllables, but um and the original band name was Mighty Joe Young. Mm, I don't like that as much. I think there's like a movie or something called that too. I don't know. It's kind of like the Pearl Jam thing, you know, just naming it after something that seems kind of hip sounding and then switching it to something else. Speaking of something hip sounding. <laughs> oh, uh, you're welcome. We have uh, one of my favorite bands, the Tragically Hip. And... I can see like maybe why some people wouldn't like it because calling something the tragically calling something tragically hip almost sounds it's almost unhip. Like like oh I'm it's I'm like so hip like it's it's like like hipster. Yeah, almost. But I mean theirs comes with like the same thing with Radiohead. It was inspired by something. It was inspired um by a skit in a movie called Elephant Parts. Um, what? Yeah, I guess it's it's like a collection of like comedy sketches and music videos by, oh, I guess Michael Naismith, formerly of the Monkees, which I actually didn't know that part. Oh, um, okay. So it's like I I I, I it looks like sketch comedy like SNL, and I guess there's a skit in the movie called Tragically Hip. Probably not the probably just called Tragically Hip, and then. They, they they liked it and they named it named themselves after it. So, but I like the name because, well, part one of the reasons I like the and the name is um for people who know their song Grace Two, which is one of the bigger songs, are you know again in Canada, not in the U.S. But um the first line in that song he sings the lyric is, she said I'm fabulously rich. But during the, like during some point in their career. Not that long after that song came out, the album came out, Gord would start singing. He said, I'm tragically hip. <laughs> Which is like so dorky that he's like changed the lyrics for the band's name. But whenever I see a live video of it, like the crowd gets pumped. Again, usually it's because it they're a pop. in Canada. But yeah, it gets a lot of applause. And I don't know, Gord, he's one of those artists to me. And maybe we'll t- we'll have a whole episode about like the coolness of like an artist. He's so like like he's a little bit mis- mysterious, but he always has intent with like all his lyrics and even like his dance moves and stuff that I feel like it's not, it's, it's silly, but like in a perfect way. And thus I, I like the band name. I mean, I wouldn't say like they're the top three band name for me, but like, I, I enjoy it. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad band name. It's all right. I, I, I mean, I think it's good. I do think it's good. It's one of those ones where the more I think about it, the less I like it, I think. <laughs> um, but but I like it, though. And it does kind of fit the band. I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I know I love an album of theirs. But I, so I guess I couldn't really tell you, though, if it fits the band. Well, I mean, maybe next month you'll have two and then you'll oh. be able to, to tell me more. Yeah, I'll, I'll be able to make my conclusions. Um, um, okay, I have a band name for you. Okay, yeah, yeah. What do you think about The Doors? Okay, so the Doors to me are, they kind of fall in the category of here's something. And I'm going to give you some more examples of like, here's something. They're they're a little better than like some of the bands I'm going to say because they have the in front of their name. But like, okay, Bread. (laughs) That's a band name. And I'm like, what? Nope, their name is Bread. America. Their name is just America. 
then you have well i actually i'm gonna save this band name for another category but yeah you have like and then you get other band names that are like animal related where it's just like well you have the animals but you have <laughs> like the, the monkeys e- the eagles the monkeys right so it like, sounds so I, silly like the eagles are such a respected band and then just to be like yeah we're called the eagles but like i i only feel like the doors is slightly above those ones i said because like a door itself is more interesting i guess than an eagle <laughs> i don't know like in a weird way um, well i got some news for you buddy it does it um, has like a history behind it yes it is named after the I guess it's an autobiographical book, The Doors of Perception, which have to do with like psychedelics and stuff. And Jim Morrison like probably read it and liked it. And then, yeah, probably. Wow, I didn't think you were going to come this prepared to this episode, like with all your, with your facts. I, <laughs> yeah, with my, with my facts about um, the Bob Dylan song Radiohead. <laughs> God. Um, uh, but yeah. So then, okay, the other category I was going to say, the, like I said, The Doors is slightly better than like, these ones I'm about to say, but like you have the unsearchable band name names. And oh, those God. awards go to the band. <laughs> the band called the band. And I'm sure if you Google them, it's actually better. Like it's not as hard as I'm making it sound like, but it's hard band, to look band. up the band when they're called the band. But then the worst one, the war to like the hardest one to look up, and you you probably know who I'm talking about. Brad. Because if you it's listen just, to this podcast, you know Brad. Because Brad is a band, but no one in the band is named Brad. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure there's there's a reason they they're called Brad, and I'm sure I could look it up right now. Um, but they're just hard to look up because you start searching Brad into Spotify or YouTube. Well, not maybe not YouTube, but like any st- music streaming service, and you're gonna get like obviously, you know, um, artists who's like brad paisley you know like someone whose first name is brad but unless you like have their music saved or like like on spotify brad's like not gonna pop up and they're a little better now but like there there are times where like they would never be in the algorithm because like and it's just it's also because they're not a super well-known band for sure but they're small um yeah that's like that's the worst name to look up like, I, I don't think I would ever recommend them to someone just because if I like told someone, oh, yeah, yeah look at the, the the band Brad, they'd go home and go, wait, he told me to look up someone. Their first name was Brad. Oh, I can't remember what he said. The last name. Was. And then there's <laughs> that was a up. very specific uh, example there. Has this happened to you before? No, no, but I no, but I think it's something that could easily happen. Don't you think? Yeah, no, it definitely could. I've definitely had struggle back in the day with it um then there's but okay so the, we're talking a lot of bad band names but um there's some that we haven't talked about that i do like um i love the raconteurs because like well raconteering is like its own thing but like like if you're a raconteur it's you're like a storyteller like that's one of the definitions i think that's really cool because i didn't know what that word meant until the band and like i looked them up and then, like, I was like, "Oh, like that's a word with a real definition, but it's not like a common word." And it, it, it's kind of like the Decemberist. Mm, how so? Isn't isn't like a Decemberist a thing? I guess. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> a participant in the conspiracy and insurrection against Nicholas I on his accession in December eighteen twenty five. Okay, so it's a historical thing. Okay. 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 So, but it's it, but it's it's like the raconteurs, right? Like kind of, yeah. Like, but I I like like, I mean, to me, a musician, or at least to me, a well, okay, that's a whole other conversation for another <laughs> podcast. But, um, what I love sometimes the most in music is lyrics, and not every lyric has to be a storytelling lyric, um, and not every raconteur song is like Carolina drama where he's literally telling like a story that could be based off a book or movie, but. I like to think of a lot of artists and bands as storytellers. So I love the raconteurs as a name. Um, but if we're talking about like, like definitions of words, like historical things, I like, I also like REM. Is it's that just weird. named after like REM sleep? Yeah. Like rapid it. eye movement. Um, 
And the only annoying thing about them is that technically it's spelled R dot E dot M dot because it's an abbreviation, right? Um, which leads me to my next category oh, of God. bad band names. Uh, and I don't include R.E.M. because, well, I, I'm a moderator with the R.E.M. subreddit. And I'm constantly typing R.E.M. into my phone. So it, it, it's autocorrected it to be spelled correctly with the abbreviations with the dots. With the periods. But, okay. And I don't mind that. And a lot of people, you, they, you could just not use the periods. and You could just R.E.M. Maybe capitalize all the letters, whatever you want to do. But Yeah, I'm an all caps fan for that band name. Yeah, and I get that because oh, technically that is how you're supposed to do it. Just you need to have like the the periods in between the letters. Right. But um, then you have the bad band names that include what I'm going to call dumb um, grammar. <laughs> oh, I, well, I'm about to be dumb because I excuse I, me. I, I, <laughs> I lost my like train of like what I was gonna call it. Like <laughs> like oh, creative dumb spelling? Punctuation. That's the word. Yeah. Well, that's spelling. Punctuation? Punctuation, yeah. And so I'm, what do you there's mean? three of them. So the first one is Portugal the Man, which is a band that I only know a couple of their big big hit songs. But they're Portugal, period, the man. Um is th- this is an actual band? Yeah, I'm sure there's one oh, of their songs I'm, I'm okay, sure you would it. know if you heard it. The, Ooh, I'm a rebel just for kicks now. Da, 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 da. If you heard it, I think you'd recognize it. It was like like four years ago, or five years ago, it was like on the radio nonstop. Like commercials, movies, all that. Um, but And I don't really know too much of their music. I just don't. It's a little too like hipster for me, but which is, I mean, a very hipster thing for me to say in the first place. But yeah, it's Portugal the man, which I really don't like that name, but it's Portugal period the man. Then you why? have, why don't I like it? <laughs> no, why, why is it called that? <laughs> I don't know. And again, I didn't, Tony and I haven't like done a ton of research for this episode. This is kind which of is a evident. freeform episode, but well, I mean, well, yeah, it's evident with you and Radiohead and Bob Dylan, but you at least knew where the doors came from. So that was good. But, I did. That was in my back pocket. Same with SDP. Um, I there's another one, and it's the band Fun, which is another band I can't stand. Well, Portugal Man, I won't. I it's not like I hate them. I just don't care for them. I do not like Fun. You don't like We Are Young? No, do not. You don't like um, that song he does with Pink? Um, I mean it's okay. I mean I Pink is a great artist. I just don't like seek her out too much because I just don't like personally love her songs. There's a couple I don't mind, but I don't wouldn't say that's one of them. But um I mostly hate them for Jack Ansonoff. I'm a big Jack Ansonoff hater. And really? if that gets us like death threats, that's okay with me. Cause and it's mostly I just do not like his production style. I mean it's he works with artists I just don't care for Taylor Swift, Lana Del Rey. I really do not like Lana Del Rey. I don't know what why people like her. And I know that's very mean of me to say, but I just do not get it. Wait, but, so is this a producer? Well, he's like the, the guitarist in the band fun. And then he made a, he made a, a side band, like a solo band called bleachers, which you might so have says he's of. the drummer in fun. Oh, okay. Sorry. He's a drummer, but he's like the guitarist and lead vocalist for his other band bleachers. And I also okay. don't, and I, so, and I don't, I don't like his vocals. I don't like his songwriting. Um, any Bleacher song I've listened to, I've just unfortunately hated. And then I just do not like his production style. He did a song with uh, Bruce Springsteen once, hated it. And then he remixed the Jason Isbell song, hated it. Um, he's probably a great guy. I just don't like anything that he touches. Um, but the reason I don't like Fun, the band name, is because it's spelled lowercase f, F-U-N, period. Again, what are where are these periods coming from? Why? I didn't even know that it was lowercase and with the period. Hundred mm-hmm. percent did not even know. And I that. hate like okay. Um, I believe Olivia Rodrigo, which I know um, you have to know that artist, just her name, right? I know the name, yeah, yeah. I uh, believe yeah. her on her she he, she just released her second solo album or solo or she's a solo artist. Her second studio album, and I believe on both albums, all her song titles are lowercase. 
which bugs me a little bit just because i hate that lowercase thing but the al- I, but what makes it a little bit better is that the album um the album name is capitalized it's all is all <laughs> that makes it a lot liked. better because it's way more just like let's be cool and like let's be edgy or whatever yeah. adjective but it, i don't know it feels more comedic the band to win the the award for the worst name with the weirdest punctuation is Panic at the Disco, which not only is a bad band name, but they have an exclamation after the word panic. Uh, let, let's slow this train down. Why is it a bad band name? Why do you think that? I You said I, that very passionately. I well, I, I just don't like Panic at the Disco whatsoever, so maybe that's mo- mostly why. It's just like a, a longer band name. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll say he's kind of creative. I, I just think what kills it for me kind is that when they when their first album, which also has like a very long album name, which I can't even remember right now. A Fever um, You Can't Sweat Out, which I think that actually which, is a Okay, good that's album not name. that long. But, the but problem, every song on the album. Every song on the album has a long name, long title, and they don't have... On that first album, there's not one song that actually contains the song title in its lyrics. So if you're someone that only remembers songs because of the word or the phrase sung in the chorus, every time the chorus happens, you would never remember the song titles because like their biggest song, I write sins, not tragedies. He never sings that in the song. Well, he he says I in it. (laughs) Yeah, he does. But that's, that's like, he never says tragedies in it. And uh, like, like the thing people remember most from that, that song is the, you know, closing the goddamn door. Yeah. Um, so, um, that'd be kind of funny though, to like to re- retitle that album, like just retitle all the songs, like see what people would come up with. Yeah. Cause that one would just probably be called goddamn door. That, that is the correct title for it. Or what, what if you called it? Um, uh, what, what is that one line in there that people, I'll, I'll tell you when I think of it. It's the not coming. Bride right. is a whore. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. Oh, oh. Po- poison. Uh. What, what does he say? Po- poison nationality or something. <laughs> poison rationality. A poison rash. Yeah. See, I didn't even know. Right. I think that'd be like a fitting title for it. Oh, and did you know? Apparently, Panic of the Disco and Fun had a collab song. No way called come on which of course because they had to have a word that had more punctuation in it wait what do you mean there's punctuation in that well because like come on like it's c and then uh apostrophe oh like that yeah Yeah. jesus yeah like you know i guess like the abbreviation slang version of the word come on yeah so yeah I, i as you could tell i and I'm not even like, I mean, I love literature and I love reading and writing, but I'm not usually not too big of a stickler when it comes to that type of stuff. But yeah, I don't like those band names because of the punctuation in it. I mean, I'll say this. When you come up with a band name, you don't need to be a poet. No, because you can come up with a band name that includes your name and then the incorrect number of band members in the band. I, I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ben Folds 5. Which is weird because, like, it's already weird. It, you walk a fine line because we have a couple of these where you have Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. The Heartbreakers being, like, his band. But I guess the emphasis is, like, this is Tom Petty's band. Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, which is a little different because, like, there was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers they did a lot of albums together before Tom Petty broke off and did his quote solo albums, even though it featured most of the heartbreakers on them. And then Bruce Springsteen though, he started off just Bruce Springsteen. And then it wasn't until like um, two or three albums then where he like adds in the E street band. So, um, but yeah, you walk a weird line where it's like, I'm naming the band after me, but then I'm going to give you guys like a, your, your own little name. But Ben Folds Fives is so weird. Cause it's just like, it's just Ben's humor where it's like, hey, let's call ourselves Ben Folds of Five. Won't they think won't people think there's five of us in the band? Yeah, and that's what makes it funny. But you know, I what's, think what's what's funnier than three? Five. Five. Yeah. If people well, get that joke, then 
kudos to you. To be fair, it sounds better than Ben Folds 3. I guess, but it's just weird that they didn't go for like a like an actual like name, you know, like I mean especially Ben Folds 5 because like I feel like the other two members are just as talented as Ben. Like the band really really needs all three of them. Well, okay, I think that's true, but but they're okay. I, I think you're right with, with that situation, but I do think sometimes, like, um, I'm trying to think you know, of a good example, but, like, you think about it, like, like Bruce probably writes all, he writes all the songs, right? And then the band just helps make it happen. So I could see in, like, some circumstances to make that distinction or to think about it, like, the Jimi Hendrix experience. Like, I think all those members were awesome and awesome together, but the one who's kind of, I mean, it's not like... It, like, it'd be the equivalent, like, Jimi Hendrix is the one you're going to remember. Like, he's, like, the lead person. He's the one that actually tries to be exciting. I know that sounds very awful to say it so bluntly like that. But that's kind of, like, that's the image, right? You got to sell the image, so. Yeah, yeah. but I, I also, f- I mean, that that's a decent point. I uh, think that's really the only point that I can make for it, though. I, I mean, because I'm someone that, I go under Tony Borrego. But, you know, I have other people help make it happen. True, but like almost any even solo artist has. There's not, I feel like, too many that writes, records and produces everything by themselves without any additional help. Yeah, you're right. I know there's some, but like there's always going to be extra people helping you. Um, it's also, it's like, cause it's like the Foo Fighters. I only really think of Dave Grohl when I think of the Foo Fighters. Unfortunately, I also thought of Taylor Hawkins, who, who's, you know, obviously no longer with us, but thought of Pat. like, well, like, yeah, like, obviously, like, and the rest of the band is great, you know, Pad and Nat, and don't worry, they all don't rhyme with each other. <laughs> I know, but, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I mostly think of Dave Grohl. But then you have like the White Stripes, which is like, Obviously named after, you know, Jack White, you know, the white stripes. But and you think the white stripes, you you do like he obviously like writes all the music. And he wrote all the music for the white stripes. Well, but then you only have though. one other band member, Meg White. She wrote all the drum parts, aka oh. one drum part. I think are you being sexist right now? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, the white stripes is that not piano keys? No? No, well, no, I, I think it's named after his last name or their last name, White. Is that actually his slash their last name? Yeah. Okay. I was just checking. Could have been but a pseudonym. I like where you're going because Lindsay's one, a band that she likes a lot. And one of her, I think maybe even her favorite band name out of all the bands she listens to is the Black Keys, which obviously piano. And the White Stripes and Black Keys are similar because it's like, a drummer and a guitarist and singer. That's it. Two members in both bands. They both kind of play like bluesy garage rock music. Um, they, they, Jack White and the black keys hated each other for a while. They had beef, but I like the both. I don't know the, I I don't know, but, um, I like the names because it makes me think of a piano, the white stripes being the white keys. And obviously the black keys being the black keys. Yeah. I don't really like the, the band name, the black keys, like it feels a little too easy on the nose, but the fact that there is the white stripes makes me like that band name, the black keys. Yeah. And then so context is really everything at the end of the day. Yeah. Which is why there's, there's a ton of band names we haven't even talked about. And we, we probably definitely will do multiple of these episodes in the future because they're fun. But like, there's a lot of genres of music that Tony and I don't really listen to. Um, like country bands that we could probably talk about band or do the then, metal band name. Well, yeah. That's, that's kind of where I was going. Like there's so many metal band names that are ridiculous that are like cannibal corpse. Yeah. Or like diarrhea planet. <laughs> I didn't need to know that was a band. Yeah. Like, and, and then there's some that I, I we're not even to mention on this podcast. Cause like they're even a little too extreme for me, but like, yeah, I, then, I will say I did see dying fetus in concert. Uh, well, I also saw Guar, which is just kind of a. <laughs> that sounds kind of awesome, though. No, but it's, it sounds like a gross word. Like, guar. I don't know why. Guar. It just sounds gross. And they're kind yeah. of a gross band. Like, they it, it feels kind of uncomfortable like to say it slow. And, yeah. So, 
we'll definitely do an episode in the future where we like talk about bands or like bands that we like. I know there's a band called Hell Halloween, like Halloween, but Halloween. Right. Which and is awful. I'm sure right? if we listen to their music, it's maybe very fitting. Maybe they write a lot of music that's like very spooky Halloween sounding. I, I want to say they're like metal or hard rock. Um, but we'll say that for another episode. We mostly talked about band names today, like bands we listen to and like. Um, and there's a lot we haven't even like the killers we didn't bring up, Death Cat for Cutie. I don't really love it. I think I like the killer Mudvane, and the band name, Puddle but I don't. Of mud. Uh, Sorry, mud I had to throw out. Oh, true. Um, Muddy Waters. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that we haven't mentioned, but um, or like the Counting Crows, like in that. I don't know, like wh- originally if that came from the song, but there's a song of theirs on their first album called The Murder of One. And there's a lyric where he sings, um, as you stood there, what's the lyric? As you stood there in the winter, underneath the winter sky, counting crows. And I do like that band name. And if you don't know, if you if you want to call a bunch of crows, the official like term is a murder. A murder is like when there's a bunch of crows together. So the song's called A Murder of One. And there's a lyric with the crows. And he drops the name of the of the band in the song. So I, I think it's cool. And there's a lot of like, I think um, Black Sabbath, don't they have a song called Black Sabbath? There's some bands that have a yes. song named after them. They do. Iron Maiden has a song called Iron Maiden yeah, I, off I thought the so. album. I thought Iron so, Maiden. but I didn't want to say that in case I was wrong, but I, I knew for sure Black Sabbath did. So, right. Uh, and then there's like silly band names like Spoon where like, or, I, don't, oh. I don't think of it too much. It's just silly. Or like, what, what about like bands like Cream? They have an album called Fresh Cream or like, um, yeah, well, that falls under like bread to me. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you do have like band names where they incorporate the band name into an album that isn't just like a self-titled album. Or Meet the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there, there are some like fun where bands are having like you know fun with their names. So, um, but we'll we'll save all those for another episode because like there's we literally could do. 20 of these episodes and not cover even half the bands out there. But I think we made a good dent. I think we kind of talked about what, what we like in a, in a good band name. Yeah. We, um, we, we, we took some shots in the dark. Yeah. Um, speaking though of, of Halloween uh, next week, we are coming back with our hello Halloween episode. Um, we didn't get a chance to do one last year because we started the podcast. We recorded our first podcast, I think actually before October, but uh, or before Halloween, but we didn't, it wasn't a Halloween themed episode. So this is our first time we get to do a, a Halloween episode. So stay tuned for that. That'll wrap up this month. And then next month we are going to come back with our special one year anniversary episode where we talk about one year of doing the podcast. Um, so we got some fun, fun things planned for that. Um, but yeah, until then, we hope everyone takes care and you'll be here f- hearing from us soon. Bye-bye.